I know that if I'd taken my daughter home and hadn't gone to the mother-child ward, I probably would have killed myself. My name is Maddie. I live with a mental illness. This is my experience. I do a lot of craft and I do a lot of art and I do a lot of sewing. Um, these are things that I did used to do in the past, but they were actually filled with a lot of turmoil. Like I'd be constantly trying to do things to get rid of the obsessions out of my brain. As a child, I probably wasn't the typical face of someone with a mental illness. I was always really outgoing. I had a lot of friends. I was very gregarious um, and quite a positive little kid. My anxiety started presenting itself when I was about four. It was more just that I would be ruminating over things over and over and over again. The first time I remember really getting stuck and obsessing about something was we were shown a Stranger Danger movie at school and it, it's like it just got stuck in my head and I was forever thinking if somebody was a stranger that was going to kidnap me. As a child, trying to hide my anxiety disorder was really awful. What I was feeling internally it was so completely different to what I was uh, portraying externally. As a small child, I, you know, I obviously really didn't know what was going on, but as a teenager, I, I just didn't want anybody to know that about me and I didn't want them to actually know that there was two different sides to me. I was really ashamed. I just wanted people just to see me as, you know, a happy-go-lucky person. Underneath it all, it was a very, very dark time and I pretty much spent the whole time feeling completely melancholy. But it was like there was, um, you know, a dark cloud over the whole of my life. Having an anxiety disorder has affected all areas of my life. The two main areas are relationships and not being able to achieve my full potential at all. With relationships, I was constantly choosing people that were very detached because I really didn't want anybody to know what I was like inside. Um, and if I did meet anybody that I knew that I would become too attached to or they would become too attached to me, I would break up with them or put distance between me and them so that they would leave. With reaching my true potential, I could never really focus on anything apart from the rubbish that was going on in my brain. So there's no way I could really achieve anything to a high standard. The absolute turning point to my life and to my um, just getting treatment for my mental illness was um, giving birth to my daughter in uh, 2008. I was very lucky because I gave birth to my daughter in a private hospital and one of the nurses had done psych nursing and she picked up that there was something going on with me very quickly. She, um, I was thinking that I was doing a really great job of hiding it all um, because I'd had a C-section. I was pretending that I was actually sick and I was throwing up with panic attacks, but she knew that this wasn't the case. And this beautiful nurse sat down with me and held my hand and said, look, something's going on with you. Do you want to see a psychologist? To which I said, yes. Um, and they sent in the psychologist who was there for three and a half hours, the poor guy. And he said to me, look, you really can't go home um, in the state you're in. You're having a really bad time. We would like to refer you to a psych ward with um, a psych hospital with a mother child ward and so I left with my baby and went to the psych hospital and finally received treatment. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> She's just the light of my life. <laughs> it's true though. She's a bit spoiled. She knows it too. She knows she's special. We say to her, oh do you want a brother or a sister? She goes, no, not just me. I've never heard of another kid doing that. Like kids always say, oh yeah, I want someone to play with. And she goes, no, no, just me and mummy. <laughs> it's terrible. Life is completely different now that I've received proper treatment. Um, it, it's like a complete 360. It's like I'm finally actually living my life. Um, before I did receive treatment, uh, 
you know, I felt like I was half alive. I mean, not even half alive. Like I felt like I was pretty much dead. Um, but now my entire life is a really happy place. And now finally my inside matches my outside. The medication that I'm on um, does work incredibly well. I'm on quite high doses of both the meds that I'm on, but it has had quite a few side effects. As a result, I put on 40 kilos within four months of starting to take it. Um, I've lost about 12 of the 40 kilos, but I've still got a long way to go. Um, and it does leave me very exhausted. The management of my medication does take up quite a lot of time. Especially with the exhaustion, I'm constantly having to go to bed really early and I have to monitor my sleep um, very closely because um, it's a slow release, one of the drugs is a slow release drug. It um, takes, you know, it, it goes through my system for 24 hours, but I do, when I first take it, I really do need to sleep for a full 10 hours. So I'm having to constantly manage my sleep routines, which is hard with a little child. Um, and with the weight gain, um, I'm constantly having to look at what I eat and I do a lot of exercise. I always did do a lot of exercise, but I've had to really ramp it up. The main reason I'm telling my story of mental illness, there's two reasons. Probably the first reason is so that other people don't have to go through what I went through. Another reason is just to let people know that People can be quite ill around you and really suffering but not look like the typical face of someone with a mental illness. The other reason I'm probably talking about my story is that I do think there needs to be quite a lot of changes to mental health um, support in Australia. I think, it, well, you know, probably the main part of my story is that I did have private health insurance and that I could receive such amazing care, but... If I didn't have the health insurance, I can pretty much 100% say that I wouldn't still be here today.